Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, I will be discussing the 2021 science fiction horror sequel that is A Quiet Place Part 2. As directed once again by John Krasinski, following on from his, well, following on from directing the first movie in the series, 2018 smash hit A Quiet Place. So, this actually marked my return to the cinema. Uh, in just over, it was about 18 months, I think. Um, I can't actually believe it has actually been that long since I stepped into a cinema, cinema and, you know, smelt that welcoming popcorn aroma, you know? And I don't even like popcorn. Um, it was certainly a fantastic feeling uh, to be able to watch something again on that big screen, especially for a film such as this, you know? Now, I'm going to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. Just some kind of basic information on the movie's plot and premise. For those of you that kind of just want to catch up, or for those of you who haven't really kind of seen the first instalment, which I do wholeheartedly recommend. Uh, now, one thing I would actually say uh, is that you can kind of get the basic idea of this movie right from the start. You know, without kind of seeing the first, you don't actually have to have seen the first movie to really get... The, some benefit out of this one you know it is very cleverly done in that way um, and kind of open it up to as wide an audience as possible and it really does succeed in that but certain elements of the film i'm not going to say i'm not going to deny sorry uh, that they will certainly be enhanced um so to say if you have indeed seen the original before watching this one it, it, there is some links but they're not you know you know they're not there overly if you know what i mean they're subtle and it's real good in that respect. And indeed, I think part of this uh, movie's charm, or in fact both of them in fact, is not knowing what's around the next corner, you know? The suspense that they kind of build up in respect to this is everything. And so indeed, I definitely do not want to spoil this, the fun for anybody uh, with this one. So you can rest easy with this review in that respect. So now, in this movie, uh, we catch up with the Abbott family uh, directly following their ordeal at the end of the first. In a vision of our world, if you like, where even the slightest of sounds may get you killed by a ravenous race of parasitic aliens with hypersetic, uh, hypersetic, hypersensitive hearing. With everything gone uh, and basically their hearts broken, they do start to look to the outside world for hope. And for the first time, leave the path known to them in search of other survivors. This indeed they do find in the form of newcomer Emmett, as played by Cillian Murphy, um, who we do find out used to be a good friend of the family. But after losing his family to the creatures, um, is nothing more than just a shell of a man, in a pit of despair, if you like, and totally without hope. But Regan, um, the Abbott family's daughter, as played by Millicent, um, uh, yeah, Millicent uh, Simmons, may have a potential way to assist in the war against the creatures and indeed give humanity hope and a tool for survival and then is determined, if you like, to push forward against all of the odds and everybody's wishes in order for humanity to have a chance once more. What then ensues is a game of survival, family, loyalties and friendships forged between the most unlikely of heroes and instilling that power and will to survive in those they meet along the way. All against the ever burdening threat of being disemboweled by an unyielding and unforgiving creature if you make ever so much as a peep. So I thought this movie did an absolutely fantastic job at capturing the suspense and the essence of the original. It was always going to be a diff difficult task, you know, um, as of course that first film was somewhat unique in its execution. But kind of once you know that main premise, the sequel really did stand a chance of just simply being a carbon copy of its predecessor. And in this respect, not really adding much for the audience at all. However, that is simply not the case here. And although I would admit that indeed it doesn't go too big and too bold in terms of its plot, nor does it really deviate from the style and the presence of the original. This film is simply riveting from the get-go. It holds your, uh, it, well, it gets a hold of you right from the start, from those very first opening moments, and never lets go until it's done. I was indeed riveted on the edge of my reclining seat, if, if indeed that is such a thing. 
Uh, but indeed, it was an absolutely awesome experience to not only be back in the cinema watching a film I was supposed to have watched over a year ago, but also to have watched something as thrilling and as worthy as this. Now, although it was bigger in scope to some extent, it, it did feel like it was a natural progression from the story in the first movie. It expanded on the law revolving around these intriguing monsters, while still really never giving too much away. It was very grounded in that respect um, and, and, and in its approach, and very much in keeping with the tone of the original. And in this, it certainly keeps the integrity of the original intact, whilst also making, well, also taking us, if you like, on a new and horrific adventure. This outing actually has more dialogue than its predecessor. You can talk a little bit, but it still has plenty of atmosphere and still more than its fair share of nail-biting and totally gut-wrenching moments. It is actually nicely packaged, I thought, into its 90-minute runtime. Um, never outstays its welcome, once again, if you know what I mean. There are only kind of a few moments uh, where it lets you catch your breath. Um, and so, you know, to be honest, 90 minutes is probably just about enough for one sitting. Additionally, the incidental music, uh, once again brought to us by Marco Beltrami, um, really does succeed in once again creating that kind of that right kind of bone chilling atmosphere, you know, balanced with moments of kind of feeling and, and strong human emotion. To be fair, I have actually been a fan of his work since, um, in horror that is at least, uh, since his early days penning the, the soundtrack to the Wes Craven Scream films. So, you know, he, he is a kind of a favourite of mine. I did think at times it did perhaps kind of up the creep level a bit too early. You kind of know something is coming 10 minutes before it actually does. But I must admit that it was kind of an interesting technique to kind of keep you on your toes, so to speak. It also set up uh, quite the number of red herring jump scares, um, some of which I must admit did make me jump higher than those from the monsters themselves. But for me, I know people don't kind of like jump scares as much, but I, I thought that was really kind of a testament to the edge that this movie creates. You know, anything and everything gets you leaping out your seat. Once again, it is also perfectly cast. I mean, most of the cast members from the first movie do reappear in this in this sequel. Um, but I did enjoy the more diverse and the more kind of encompassing story that we get for the two children this time around, especially following Reagan as the film's new main lead. She does take far more of a proactive and prominent role uh, in this movie, which she handles with ease um, and really does take everything in her stride bringing us a stubborn and determined vision of this character who certainly finds her way and comes into her own during the course of this story. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that Emily Blunt, um, who plays the mother, um, Evelyn Abbott, actually takes quite a bit of a back seat in this movie. Um, but then this really does give the other cast members a chance to show what they can provide to the story. And indeed, this most certainly is what we get. And definitely worth a mention, is Cillian Murphy. Um, he is absolutely superb as Emmett. Um, you know, this tortured soul and one of Abbott's friends before the infamous day when the monsters arrived. As a replacement for Krasinski, uh, I'm saying all these, but I'm Krasinski, um, he offers a different take um, on how somebody would actually start to respond in such a crisis and really does offer a kind of a different, more hardened perspective than what we had more war-torn, if you like, and he really does put in everything he's got into that role. And with more of the cast kind of taking more prominent roles and, you know, such a larger undertaking this time around, we actually get a story which travels along using multiple tangents at the same time. Um, and we see the events occurring in real time across these various threads as one then impacts on the other, which is really quite clever. It really does add yet another kind of brilliant level to the, to the movie's overall storytelling technique. The cinematography, on point again, um, what can I say? Although, don't get me wrong when I say this, um, I loved it in spite of what I'm about to say, but there's kind of really only so many times, uh, so many, you know, so many dystopian movies and TV shows that you can see before a shot of a road littered with cars and dead bodies 
uh, or a town with no signs of life becomes a little bit routine, you know? You, you can only see so many walking deads, you know, before things get a bit plain, you know? Um, becomes a bit routine. Um, that's no longer the kind of shocking aspect of these movies for me anymore, you know? Um, however, I do think this film counters this to some extent by keeping things very local. Um, we don't actually travel all that far through the movie, and at times we even had some kind of great moments touching on events in the original movie, kind of going backwards and, and kind of re-looking at that story. Overall, I think this movie offered a really balanced amount of suspense, horror, and action. There really wasn't a dry moment in this. And again, the movie just kind of teased enough about the monsters themselves to give us something new without revealing all of their secrets. Irritating in some ways, but exceedingly clever, you know, in others, you know? What I can respect with this movie for is its grounded nature. Um, sure, it was more adventurous in scope and and feel than the first it was but it didn't try to push those boundaries too far you know the boundaries set by the first movie still stood it didn't offer us anything more than snippets of the monsters that we encounter we didn't get them change into more terrifying creations we didn't introduce another race of beings this simply felt like a true continuation of this story just the next chapter in this formidable world if you like this is indeed a very worthy sequel, and to say that, a very worthy horror when all is said and done. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer actions, and other movie related content. Absolutely love having you here at SciFest Movie Talk, we definitely love to have you back, but most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye!